What's up, Moz Mutilators? I'm Quackers Co, and this is the fish fry for November 2nd, being held at Sockeye Station. Our cookware composition are the Dapple Dooleys, the Octo Brush, the Classic Squiffer, and the... Oh boy. That's right, the Dynamo Roller is back. The Dynamo could be an occurrence beast. Since that roll causes 400 damage and can take out Cohawks, it's always helpful to remember how much ink this weapon uses up and to keep this weapon topped off at all times. And as soon as you make that approach rolling towards something, remember when you go to ink back up that you get that ink all the way back to the top. And with the very slow painting that the dynamo offers, it's up to everybody else to get as much as the turf and those walls painted as possible. Especially during high tide, these sidewalls are the only ways that we can make approaches on these side bosses when we're being surrounded by lessers. We're eventually going to get hit and boosted out into the water, and we need every single corner covered so that we can get ourselves to safety. Especially when all those flyfish missiles coming down, sometimes the only safe spot is on the curve of that tower. And if you think you're going to have another high tide, why not just go ahead and paint that tower a little bit more at the end of the match? And during a low tide, all of our mobility is with the turf, so we gotta do our best to paint it so that way we can lure our bosses to the basket. If you find yourself in a tornado wave, and the chest is on the right side, just go ahead and toss those eggs on that side. It is a shorter distance to toss them that way. And not to mention, it'll keep you away from the lessers landing right on top of you. For how simple the lessers are supposed to move, they can be really unpredictable sometimes. So let's do our best to make sure that RNG doesn't hurt us too bad. And of course you can throw an egg from anywhere on the shoreline to the top of the tower. And that tower is also very useful during a lot of these occurrences. During a griller's wave, it's really easy to use those walls, both for positioning the griller to stun it so that the dynamo can roll into it, and also whenever you need to collect those eggs, you can just hang on the wall and get the grillers away from the other players. And I'm still going to say that this spot here, two-thirds up the tower ramp, is probably the best for normal wave glowflies. I've seen other YouTubers saying that you should stay near the basket, but considering that there's two different points that the salmonids can come from, that'll cause random flanks to happen because these salmonids can move in such crazy waves during a rush. And then when you do get flanked, you have to make your way back to the tower. I always see these YouTubers also activating specials and panicking. Don't get me wrong, activating specials during a glowfly is super helpful. But whenever I'm testing out this spot and I see where the eggs land, they would land right where the other players would be. And if they're not there, then they're really easy locations that people could push through or to move the salmonids to the other side, literally just hanging on the wall that you get bumped onto. This spot right here just seems like such an easy place. It funnels all the salmonids into one spot giving you all the damage output that you need, and there's plenty of spaces to get a little extra ink to toss the eggs in. Considering that we got the roller and the piercing damage of the squiffer, this spot should make glowflies just really simple. Alright, let's get into the cookware. Our first cooking utensil are the Dapple Dooleys. The Dapple Dooleys do have the shortest range of their class, but they also have one of the highest DPS's in the whole game. So when you're painting walls with it, it might be helpful just to stick to the lower walls, that way you can get them painted, or if you're going to go to the tower, jump off the side and paint on your way down. And if you really want to maximize the DPS in this weapon, activate turret mode, and this thing will just melt anything in its way. It also has the quickest dodge rolls in the game, but you still need to be careful about that cooldown. Our second cooking utensil is the Octo Brush. Just like the Dapple Dooleys, the Octo Brush has an incredibly close range. So that same trick of jumping off the side of the tower and painting on your way down will help you get just a little bit of extra height out of this weapon. Its brush down walking speed may not be as fast as the ink brush, but that doesn't change how useful this weapon's mobility is. 
It's a really handy tool for activating slamming lids to take out other bosses. And its coverage works really well for flipper floppers. Our third cooking utensil is the Classic Squiffer. The Classic Squiffer has a bit of a short range. And even at the top of this tower, you won't reach a lot of things. You will need to give yourself a little bit of a push out there onto the level of the Salmonids. But thankfully, this weapon has good enough damage and the shots are piercing. Just remember that Kohawks will have to take two shots, so as long as you make sure you keep firing charge shots down some of these lanes, it should work out pretty well. This is our long range support weapon, so keep that in mind that if you get yourself down to the shoreline, that you do not take a detour on your way back up. Our last cooking utensil is the Dynamo Roller. The Dynamo Roller's fling is the longest range attack that we have in this rotation. But keep in mind, at full range, it doesn't have its full attack power. So this weapon works best as a backline weapon. If you put your roller down and then allow your ink to come back, as long as you always start your approach at full ink, you can make a great approach at the shoreline. And then try to always swim your way back and get your ink literally topped back off to full. Because once it is at full, you can throw a bomb and still be able to make an attack with this. And vice versa, you'd be able to make an attack and then if a moth snuck up on you, you would have enough ink to throw a bomb. Even with that said, here on Sockeye Station, I don't think it'd be very smart to make approaches on stingers or flyfish. If you get your way all the way down to the shoreline, you'll probably be out of ink and it'll be hard to get your way back up. The only shoreline boss that you should attempt is a big shot. If you can position yourself between the big shot and his cannon, it'll take him out almost instantly. And the same thing goes for flipper floppers. That little moment that they poke their nose out of the ink is a perfect moment for you to take them out. Also, right when Drizzlers are taken off, you can get some of that roller damage on them. Any way that you can apply that 400 damage with the roll will help splat almost anything that you come across. Like I said though, just always make sure that you're topping yourself all the way back up to full. During an extra wave, if the Dapples can aggro the Kohozuna while constantly applying damage, and the Squiffer can focus also on the Kohozuna, that way the Octobrush and the Dynamo could go take out bosses, and lessers, you might be able to melt his HP pretty quickly. And remember that the fish fry comes out before the stage rotation. So if you want to catch these updates when they're hot and fresh, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. And if you want other Grizzco employees to receive these tips, make sure you like and share the video. Bye bye